Repetitive stress injuries, RSI, exercise-induced pulmonary hemorrhaging, EIPH. What is the connection? Repetitive stress training and repetitive stress injuries are causative factors for EIPH. Repetitive stress injury, RSI, is an injury of the musculoskeletal and nervous systems that occurs when excessive repetitive motion stress is placed on an area of the body without relief. Over time, accumulative repetitious motion results in muscle strain, inflammation, and soft tissue damage. The resulting pain creates an inability of the musculature and nervous systems to properly function. Left untreated, it can and eventually will lead to permanent disability. In both human and equine athletes, repetitive stress training of the muscular system without relief leads to RSI. In humans, RSI often leads to muscular nerve compression and entrapment, better known as nerve crush or neuropathy. RSI problems are the number one cause of workman's compensation claims in the United States. Yet, ERSI, equine repetitive stress injury, goes largely unrecognized within the equine racing world. Neuropathy. Repetitious training regimens of the horse, as in the human, without the benefits of therapeutic muscular relief, will create muscular compression, compaction, tearing, and adhesion of that muscular tissue and fascia. This begins an injury cycle which may result in neuropathy. The injury cycle of repetitive stress training begins with weak and tight muscles. This creates friction, pressure, and tension, which results in decreased circulation, swelling, edema. Then adhesions, fibrous scar tissue is the end result. This picture shows muscular compression, micro tear damage, adhesion, and neuropathy due to RSI. These are muscular strain injuries resulting in compaction and neuropathy of the nervous system. The stages of neuropathy caused by RSI over a period of time include muscular nerve compression leading to sheath loss, disconnection, and degeneration of the nerve. These neurologic symptoms caused by ERSI and the resulting muscular neuropathy usually go unrecognized for the majority of horses in training. Horses suffering with ERSI are unfairly labeled as having no ability, no heart, behavioral problems, or just a fill in the blank. Since the root cause of these performance problems is unrecognized, horses with these problems generally receive ineffective treatments such as time off, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, unnecessary joint injections. Some specific cases of equine neuropathy due to ERSI can be caused by the consistent or improper use of equipment. This list includes but is not limited to martingales, draw reins, shadow rolls, tie downs, and similar aids which can adversely affect the deeper neck flexor muscles of the horse. ERSI and consistent overconstriction of some of these deeper neck flexor muscles and surrounding muscular fascia can begin to create compression of the deep vagus nerve, eventually leading to nerve degeneration of the lung alveoli. A human equine RSI comparison would be the scalenous muscles of the neck which are involved in both human and equine thoracic outlet neuropathy. Here is a picture comparison of human RSI and equine ERSI muscular compression resulting in thoracic outlet syndrome. In nerve compression, the most distal aspect of the nerve innervations are the first affected. The distal branches of the vagus nerve provide parasympathetic innervation to the lungs. The most distal lobe of the lung is usually where EIPH first appears. As the condition progresses and more tissue is affected, bleeding may be observed through the endoscope or externally through the nostrils. Active and preventive therapies. ERSI and muscular nerve compression is a progressive problem originating in the early stages of training. Incorporating applications of simple, non-invasive therapy techniques early on in training and continuing them throughout the athlete's career can assist and help prevent muscular nerve compression presently and in the latter stages of training and competition.
Conventional therapy, presently the most common form of treatment for horses with EIPH, is pharmaceutical intervention after discovery of the problem. Prevention, however, is always the most cost-effective solution for any health problem, especially with an athlete. The following non-invasive therapies are very effective and can easily be incorporated into the routine of every serious training stable. Equine sports massage, equine electromuscle stimulation, equine electroacupressure, cold laser, stretching. These techniques should begin in the early training stages, two-year-olds, and be continued throughout the horse's career for maximum benefit to the horse, the owner, and the trainer. Any theory to explain the mechanism of EIPH should address the following three points. Number one, explain the location and nature of the damage within the lung. Number two, explain the progression of the condition through the lung. And number three, explain the variation of severity of EIPH within individual horses over time and between different individuals. Number one, the location and nature of damage within the lung. The most distal innervation of the vagus nerve of the lung, the dorsal caudal lobe, where bleeding generally begins, is first affected by ERSI. Neuropathy resulting in alveoli dysfunction. Number two, the progression of the condition through the lung. Left untreated, continued ERSI and muscular compression leads to further disconnection and degeneration of the lung innervation and progressive alveoli dysfunction and bleeding throughout the lung. Number three, the variation of severity of EIPH within individual horses over time and between different individuals. ERSI neuropathy is a progressive problem, as is EIPH. There are no general standards other than the degree of ERSI and neuropathy will always vary in the individual horse according to numerous factors including age, level of fitness and muscular tension, exertion, conformation, equipment used, training surfaces. This partial list may explain the inability to achieve a consensus on a single causative factor of EIPH as they all play a part. This veterinary study, which appeared in the Equine Vet Journal 2003, shows that inclined running increases pulmonary hemorrhaging in the thoroughbred horse. This inclined running tends to stress the flexor muscles and the level of exertion of the flexor muscles, I believe, is a determining factor in EIPH. It is my hope that information in this short presentation will begin to start a dialogue to further answer all three of these questions. Unless change is incorporated in training and equipment, and sports therapy techniques are also added to the horse's training regimen, these problems will not be reduced or eliminated solely through breeding, drugs, or injection. It's up to the individual horsemen, owners, breeders, and veterinarians to incorporate and take advantage of these non-invasive techniques and reap the resulting rewards. As it has always been in the racing industry, the future belongs to the individual trainer, owner, or veterinarian willing to challenge the status quo, take advantage of emerging knowledge, and reap the benefits for their horses. Ignorance is bliss and excuses. Knowledge is power and win photos. Thank you and best of racing luck. This information has been presented by Don Doran, Equine Performance Consultant. Don is located in Reddick, Florida, USA. If you are ready to schedule performance consultations and equine bodywork for your horses, you can reach us in the following ways. You may call us at the office. The number is 352-591-6025 or you can send an email to tbred underscore performance underscore consultants at aol.com. If you need more information, you can visit our website. That site is www.thoroughbred-performance-consultants.com. We hope this information has been helpful to you, and we look forward to hearing from you soon.